I thought I'd better video some of this along the way. I have a hair up my rear end to make a quilt tag. I, I really wanted to make it for one of my journals and eventually I will because I have a different pattern I want to use in that that has a story behind it. Um, but I just, every once in a while I get a hair and I just want to make it. <laughs> so I found a quilt pattern that I liked. I like this, it looks like a heart and I want to incorporate that into a tag. And I will leave the information for this quilt pattern down below so you can find it. It's a free quilt pattern. Obviously with paper quilting, you cannot do like a quarter inch border or anything because you're not sewing it together in the same sense you're gluing it. So you, you just have to figure out what your final sizes are and then you cut your paper and glue it down. Uh, so I pulled mine into my computer and figured out how many blocks I would need to make to get the inside of the tag that I want to do. I mean, I'm doing the, uh, the Tim Holtz um, tag and book plate size tag. And um, so that gave me a basic what it would look like when it's done. Obviously, all these edges will be gone. And uh, so I went from there. And I figured out how big I needed my squares to be. This is the full width of the tag, but I needed it blown up so I could see. <laughs> so, um, I went through my stash of paper. Try, try Penny's losing his mind. <laughs> if I had my phone closer... <laughs> He's doing the risky business where he comes running into the room and he hits this rug I have in front of the pellet stove and it slides across the floor. <laughs> oh, never a dull moment. Anyway, Biddy. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so I went through my stash and I really wanted to do it in pinks, but I just couldn't find enough coordinating colors to work with the pinks that I, I don't know. I, I spent way, way too much time trying to figure it out. And uh, anyways, I decided since this weekend coming up is Valentine's day, I'd go with Valentine's type f colors. And so I found, um, in my stash. Oh gosh, these are so old you guys. Um, I think they're 2011. Yep. 2011, my mind's eye. I have the whole collection, every single one of them. Um, and anyway, so this one had enough neutrals in it to do the outside plus a couple pops of color for the inside. So that is the paper stack that I'm going to use for that. And then I found, um, let's see here. I got stuff everywhere. All right, so then I went through and I figured out what patterns I wanted to go in which, which places and I numbered them and then I numbered each of the sheets that I had so that I can correspond with them. I put a piece of sticky tape on the back of them and cut out the size strip because the, reason, the other reason I picked this pattern is if it, it looks really complicated, but it's just strips. They're all strips. There's no diagonal lines or anything like that. And so that makes it really easy if you're doing this kind of paper quilting, if you will, especially if you're using, doing it in a smaller, smaller size. This is what size it will be when it's done. And so if you get too complicated with it, it, yeah, you just, it's really difficult. Not, not impossible, but I have the attention span of a two year old. I want to do intricate projects, but they have to be quick. So anyways, I went through and I picked out the papers and then I numbered them to match where I wanted them to go. I, hold on. In order to figure out where I wanted things to go. Hold on, I have a picture. I um, laid them out kind of in the way the pattern's going to go. So you have a number one here. Number two is going to go here, number three, four and five, so on and so forth. And then my pop of red and my pop of black. So you can kind of see the heart 
showing up. So that's, that's, whoops, drop it on the floor. That is how I figured out um, where I wanted what colors to go. So I have this neutral, a music note, a floral, some text, this patterned material, and then of course the black and white polka dot and the red and cream polka dot for the centers. And so to, to figure out exactly what size I needed, because this is not a quarter inch, it's not a half inch, it's not a, I did it, I sized it to fit on my tag not to a particular size. These ended up one and a half by one and a half uh, inches, but that doesn't give you a, like a quarter, a nice round quarter inch increment. So to make sure I got the exact same size, cause they're all the same size, I printed out another set of them and I drew a dark line down here. And so when I line it up on my, my paper trimmer, I basically take it, I need a piece of paper here. My trimmer is a caterpillar, so it's great big, so I can't bring it over here. But imagine, this is where you line it up. Here's your cut bar, okay? And so I just lined this up in the corner so that it was perfectly square. And then I moved it over underneath the blade so that it lined up exactly on that mark. I took off my pattern and I cut it. And I did that for all of them. And I did one cut at a time. I didn't try to layer them or do a whole bunch of time, uh, cuts at a time because it'll slowly get off the, the more layers you have. And you really kind of, you know, you need them as exact as you can get. These it's are probably, 11, 15. probably not even still not exactly perfect, but they're as close as I can get. But you want to do them just one strip at a time. And so that gave me a perfect template for this size block. Um, so now the next next I thing that I have to do is um, I have to cut. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use the, the line on my cutter. I'm going to use the line here. And so to, in order to get the pieces, let's pretend this one's the one that's going to go across. I will draw a line. Like this. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. I will draw a line like this. Okay, this just makes it easier for me to line up blind as a bat. Um, and then I will put this in my trimmer. Okay, and I will line it up like this, line up my blade, move my thing and cut it there. I, I won't use the quarter inch mark on my trimmer. I want these to be this size, not whatever size my trimmer is because all the trimmers are different no matter what. It, I haven't had a trimmer that cuts exactly the same as another trimmer in 25 years. So um, this way I know that I am getting this piece. And then I will just repeat that for all of the, the shapes. So the next one that I'll do is be this one. So I'll draw a line here so that I can cut that length. Does that make sense? Um, if, if you have questions or anything, just leave them down below. I don't know anybody that does wants to do this or does this or has this squirrel, but if you do, that that's basically how I break it down. And I do the same thing no matter how intricate the quilt block is. It's the same idea. Because you're gluing it down and not sewing it down, you don't have to worry about seam allowances or anything like that. Um, and so I already have all the adhesive on the back. So what I should be able to do, and I won't put them directly on the tag. What I'm going to do is I will make all of these blocks because I still want it to look like a quilt. Does that make sense? And so I will then lay the blocks together because you need that space in between them 
I don't know how else to explain it. If you just lay them all down in a mosaic, it's, it's a mosaic, it's not a quilt. But if you do the blocks, you have these sections and sections. It, you don't have to do that, you don't have to do any of it. Um, you could, I mean, you, you, you could do anything you wanted, but that's how my plan is. It also um, will help, I think, with lining it up a little bit better. You could do, you know, like strips like this, but um, the other thing that reason that I'm not doing it directly on the tag is that quilts come with a binding. And so I want to make sure that I can cut this whole thing down small enough to have room to put a binding around it. Um, that way it's finished. Does that make sense? And so, uh, but I don't know what that is yet. And so that I'll figure that out when I get there. But that's the other reason that I'm going to do it in pieces. Um, all right. So that's what I've got so far. I'm going to go off and cut these shapes and then I will be back to show how I glue it all down, if you will. Um, all right. Okay. Catching you up where I'm at. I got all of my pieces cut out. I, um, Yeah, I got all the pieces cut out and I got them laid onto my template and they're upside down because I covered my template with Glad Press and Seal upside down. Well, it doesn't stick to the backer on my sticky tape, so I have to place them face down. <laughs> but it, I don't really need to see what it looks like. That's kind of part of the reveal anyways. But um, I just need to make sure I had enough in the the squares and so if i'm missing any hold on like right there it would show me that i needed to put another piece in there and i don't have them lined up so they're they're not in there real good but it's the general idea and then this is basically where the where, where i'm keeping so i don't need to go out to the edges but if i need more i can always um cut some more. Um, so the next step is to flip them over and put them onto my tag um, or onto a piece of paper so that I can cut them out to put onto my tag. I haven't decided how I'm going to do it. We're winging this. It's There's not a science. I'm sure there's tutorials and rules and stuff, but I don't know what they are. So um, I will be back when I start that part of the project. Okay, I wanted to do a check-in and show that no matter how careful you are with cutting, it's still going to be off. It, it's just, no two cuts are ever the same. So this is the other reason why I do the blocks individually. That way I can cut these blocks square and then put them on my project. So I don't have to worry about overhang or anything like that. And one of them I cut completely wrong, so I've been piecing it in there. But if you do it in individual blocks, then I'll just go through and cut this apart and um, square them up, and then they'll butt right up. And you're not looking for per perfection here. This isn't actually a quilt. <laughs> so, you know, just do your best and just have fun with it. But I think it's turning out pretty good. I've got them upside down from each other, but you can kind of see the heart. See it? What do you think? All right. I'm going to go back to tedious piecing here. <laughs> I'll be back. Another update. All right. So I only did the full size blocks so far. And this is what I've got so far. They're not they're just sitting on the sticky paper. And basically this is what each one of the blocks looks like. And um, so I basically just squared them up on the paper trimmer. That's why I put it down on the, that piece of paper I had it on with the black lines. Those were perfectly square. And so I just cut them to those lines so that they squared up. They're not all the same size. I don't care. It's okay. It's all right. Um, if you've ever seen me sew, you'll know that nothing lines up either. So it's all good. <laughs> Anyways, uh, just to make sure I have enough pieces, I have uh, laid it on here, full size pieces. I know that I have, whoops, I need, I need to, um, 
I have a bunch of the the part, bleh, English, the parts that are going to fill in these edges. But I wanted to make sure I had enough full size blocks. But isn't it cute so far? And then I'm going to cut all of that off. <laughs> I may have to make a bigger tag because I don't know if I can cut all that off. I mean, it needs to be at least out here, right? So we'll have to see how it goes. There's my faro. Time to go make dinner. I'll be back. I know I have the fans and stuff running, but I'm not turning anything off to get this done. I got, um, I glued it, sort of kind of glued it a down, there's a little bit of video that shows us, to a piece of vellum so that I could see the pattern below it. Also, I thought it would be really easy to sew through, and it was, and I haven't cut my strings yet, but I um, then stitched just the main fault lines, <laughs> if you will down on this and then now I have to make the tough decision on <laughs> what size to make it because now I don't want to cut it but I got to cut it um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue all of these strings in the back so I can cut it anywhere I want and not have to worry about um, it coming unraveled so that's what I plan to do, and then I'll let that dry. Um, in case you're wondering, this does gum your needles up really bad in your sewing machine because I've got the sticky tape on the back of them. And what I do is I go for a little while, and then I pull the needle out, wipe it down with an alcohol uh, swab or pad, whatever, and then put it back, you know, cleans it all off. And then you just do that, and you keep repeating it. That way you don't get you don't let it build up or anything like that um and so yeah i didn't have any trouble sewing through any of it so i'm going to the next step is to decide what size i want to make it and then i'm going i got the borders cut out i'm i'm debating on whether what how to do the borders so i was thinking a little black binding binding <laughs> binding um a black binding and then an outer red red binding something like that to pull the color across um or maybe just keep it simple and do something like that so i'm not sure what do you think i don't know let me know you won't let me know because by the time you watch this, I don't know why I keep doing that because by the time you guys watch this, this will be a complete video and it'll be done. So if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, though, you will answer that question because unbearably I will post it and go, what do you guys think? <laughs> so if you'd like to chime in along the process, follow me on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, both are mouse potato designs. But, um, all right, so I'm going to go make that decision, and then I will be back.
right, and that's basically a week's worth of work done in 20 minutes on a video. <sighs> I don't know why I made this. I had no reason, but I really, really am happy with how it turned out. Um, it's going to make a great flip in my journal. It'll either go in this journal, which is my quote journal, or my existence journal. And I just think it'll. I can either glue it down like this so you can see the tab, or I can glue it over the edge so you don't see the tab, but it makes a pocket. And I'm going to put a story in it. It's probably going to go in my existence journal so I can tell a story about all of the sewing I'm getting into right now. Um, so that's that's pretty much my plan for it. I it I just thought it was fun and it was pretty. If you guys make this, I would love to be tagged in your whatever social media you use, um, so that I can see what you created. Also, um, it's fun. It's a lot of work. It took a long time, and you know it's not perfect, but it's fun. And yeah. I thanks so for coming along on this journey with me. I will see you guys in the next video and comments, questions, suggestions, all that kind of stuff down below. Um, yeah, I'm off to work on my other gotta get her done. <laughs> Talk to you later, guys. Bye.